If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and try to solve the question on your own first before listening on. We can see from the graph that the acceleration is increasing as the position increases. And from Newton's second law, we know that the net force on an object is equal to its mass times its acceleration. Well, if the acceleration is increasing, then that means that the net force also must be increasing. And that means that in order to calculate the work, we're going to have to calculate the work done by a changing force or a variable force. Again, because the acceleration is changing, that means the net force is changing. And so in order to get the work, we need to calculate it for a variable force. And so let's take a look at the equation that we use to calculate the work done by a variable force. And according to that equation, to calculate the work, all we need to do is take the integral of the force function from the initial position to the final position. Now, of course, we were not given a force function in this question, but we do know, once again, from Newton's second law, that the force would equal the mass multiplied by the acceleration of the object. The problem with this equation right now is that we are integrating with respect to the variable x but inside of the integral here, the variable is a. And that's basically an inconsistency in variables. We're not going to be able to easily integrate that. So the challenge becomes to replace a with an expression in terms of x. And once we do that, that means that our variable in the integral is going to be the same as the variable that we are integrating with respect to. So let's go over to the graph and see if we can figure out a way to express the acceleration in terms of x. Now the graph is that of a straight line and we know that the equation of a straight line is basically y equals mx plus b. In this case the y-axis is actually acceleration so we can rewrite this as a equals mx plus b. Now b is the y-intercept and in this case it's actually the a-intercept and we can see from the graph that the y-intercept or the a-intercept is actually zero. So we can actually plug zero in for b, which basically makes it disappear. Now we can actually find the value of m, which is simply the slope. But before we do that, we have to figure out the values along the acceleration axis. We were told that this highest value up here is equal to 20. So we do know that. We also know that there are one, two, three, four spaces. So if we divide 20 by four, we get five. And that means that each increment is five. So we can label the rest of the axis here. Now to get the slope, we can start at this point and we can count up 5, 10, and then go over 1, 2, 3, 4. So the slope is up 10 over 4. And if we simplify that, we get 2.5. So let's come over here to our acceleration equation and plug in 2.5 for the slope. We now have an expression for the acceleration in terms of x, and that's exactly what we set out to do. So what we'll do is take that expression and plug it in for a, so that we'll have an integral that we can actually compute. So we'll take the mass and we'll multiply it by the acceleration, which again we just found was 2.5x, and then integrating with respect to x, so dx. Now the initial position was 0, as we can see from the graph, and the final position is 8. So let's plug those in. And then also, according to the laws of integrating, we can take this constant value of 2.5m and pull it to the outside of the integral. And so that's going to give us 2.5m multiplied by the integral from 0 to 8 of x dx. Now the integral of x is relatively simple. All we have to do is remember that there is an exponent of 1 there. And so when we integrate x with respect to x, we add 1 to the exponent to make it x to the 2, and then we divide by that new exponent. And we'll evaluate this from 0 to 8. We can simplify this integral by dividing 2.5 and 2. And so we can then see that the work is equal to 1.25 times the mass times x squared, again evaluated from 0 to 8. Now, in order to evaluate this, we plug in the upper limit first. So we're going to have 1.25 times the mass times 8 squared. And then we subtract what we get by plugging in the lower limit. So that's going to be 1.25m times 0 squared. Now, of course, this term will cancel out. And then we can plug in the mass, which was given to us as 10 kilograms. And when we work this out, we can see that the work is 800 joules. 
And this becomes the correct answer to the question.